Hello and welcome to this special World Cup webinar in conjunction with the coaching manual. Uh, so I'm John and I'm the co-founder of InspireCoachEd.com and I'll be your host for the next few minutes. Um, I'm joined today with Paul Bright from the coaching manual. Hi Paul, how are you doing? I'm good John, thanks for having me on again. Brilliant and today's theme then is Iceland and the low block. So yeah, so we've just watched the game Paul. So um, Iceland have just been eliminated from the World Cup after a promising first game on point against Argentina. What went wrong? Um... So it's a very good question and you know Iceland are uh, everyone's second favourite team you know they were fantastic in the Euros um, knocking out England of course and, and just, just the enthusiasm of the fans the, the, the grit the determination and the attitude of the players but there was a tactical underpinning strategy behind it and Iceland were really playing to their strengths throughout the Euros and then into the World Cup I, I just think within a World Cup tournament you need to go out with, with the attitude of you want to win games. And I'm not saying Iceland didn't want to win. I'm just saying the low block tactic that we're going to discuss and talk about, you know, you've got to be clinical going the other way. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll touch on some other teams who, who use and, and adopt a similar approach, both international and club teams. But then you look at their front men and you look that when they counter attack and get it forward, it is clinical. So first game against Argentina, um, I thought, Iceland were, were exceptional. However, it was pretty obvious that Argentina are always going to play through Messi or try and play through Messi. Um, you know, people like Dybala are not getting the game time they should have been doing. Um, so to, to pack in and, and stay tight to Messi in the past, Messi's been able to shake it off. But these Icelandic players have got some big boys who, who can get there quickly, can close the ball down, can screen the ball and can pack the spaces. Uh, so I think that tactic worked. Um Second game, um, I think it was Mikel Obi who played deeper in a deeper role as more of a six. And we can touch on some of this beating a low block is really switching the play and getting that, that block to shift quickly. Because if they keep shifting quickly, then at some point they're going to leave gaps. And then you exploit and expose the gaps, whether that's a through ball or, or an over-the-top ball or a diagonal pass. So that's how teams set up to really beat the low block. You've got to shift the block. Um, and then I thought today, if I'm honest, I think Croatia are one of the standout teams in the tournament. A few people might disagree with me, but you know they've got real quality in there. Modric being a key man, and, and we're going to touch on the game as well, and I'll get some some images up because it was clear that Iceland wanted to stop Modric playing as well in that deeper role and higher as an eight. And you know on the ball they were adopting a four four one one off the ball a four four two. Um, leaving very little space between between the lines and looking to press and overload Modric quickly, as we talked about. Um, Iceland are very direct. And, and the, is it Finn Bogerson up top? I think they left him isolated in the first half. Uh, I'm going to get... If I can share my screen with you as well, John. Um, so I'll get this up. I've, I've, I did some notes as well as the game was going on. So, um, yeah, so you, you look at their... The Iceland starting 11 4 4 1 1. Uh, I think Finn Bogerson got left isolated up top, and, and Iceland didn't break as quickly and as aggressively as they normally did do. Um, everything was looking to go long, so Croatia are really smart um, tactically as well, just dropping off, denying space in behind, but also maintaining possession um, for long periods of time. So um, the second half was interesting because it actually changed into a 3-5-2 at some point, but I want to touch on that later. So if we if we stay on, on task with the Iceland game, there was a few moments with, with the low block, um, which was successful, you know, for the most part. Um, so when the ball was shifted into, into this sort of area, you know, inverted channels, whatever you want to call it, you know, shifting towards the side, the block shifts and tries to deny space in that penetrating, you know, in between the lines really and keep it nice and compact and tight. It'd be interesting to know Iceland's um, game plan and line of engagement as well with with Fig Bogerson and Sigurdsson as well to say how far do they retreat back, when do they engage. Um, but for the most part, at times it was successful. There's another moment that, that highlighted within the first half. Um, even when um, Croatia had the ball in their own, half you know Iceland didn't want to get caught in behind we're, we're inviting the pressure and it's it's a really it's a really brave tactic to say well come on come and break us down with the thought process of 
we're going to do you the other way. I think the best in the world at this, if you watch Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid, they're unbelievable at this. Keeping everything tight, compact. They send teams around them. They look for, for those opportunities to press. And of course, you know, Griezmann up top, one of the finest forwards in the world. And that's where the quality really comes in the counter-attack. And if I'm honest, in the first half, Iceland had none of that. Um, so if we look at the counter-attacking moments, um, again, allowing Croatia to get in and Fig Bogerson and Sigurdsson were getting isolated. Bodies weren't getting forward quickly enough to support them and it allows Croatia to recover. So the real key tactic when um, looking to play play out, uh, play out, with a low block is, is the counter-attack at, at speed and, and counter-attacking ag aggressively. So... Um, I think that that was, was their lack. And if you look at the Euros compared to the World Cup, you know, they adopted more of a 3-5-2 and a 5-3-2 uh, formation, which was, this was a bit more of a 4-4-2. Then compare the second half today with Iceland and they had to go for the win. And when they had to go for the win, you know, they went out for the with the 3-5-2 um, and really pushed on. There was an occasion just before the penalty, was it Bogertson who had a great opportunity when they broke down the right and switched it across. It was actually a four versus three in Iceland's yeah. favour. So they started to come out. Um, again, hindsight is is the best coach in the world and they lost the game 2-1, but they actually went for it. They, yeah. they, they pushed out, they pushed on. And I, I respect Iceland massively as a footballing nation. You know, I've got some friends who are coaching in Iceland in, in their top league and they're doing things right. The coach education's right. There's different structures at play towards, say, in England or Spain or US, just just in terms of demographics and the number of people within the country to get them on one page can be a lot easier. But it was clear, it was nice to see a tactic. And like we said, you know, with, with defending with a low block, your counter-attacking's got to be very, very good. You've got to be organised. You've got to recognise who the key players are between the lines and stay tactically disciplined. Um, like we said, Atletico Madrid, are probably the best I've seen at, at that. Uh, yeah. Simeone prides his teams on, on being able to defend and hit hit teams on the counter. I know Mourinho's Manchester United, they don't defend with a low block as such, but they play that counter-attacking game. Uh, yeah. Morocco have done it, Iran have done it for quite a few years, to be fair. And, and again, it's the pace and the aggression of the attack. But if I, if I share my screen again with you, John. Do you think because it's such a, an intense, I guess, defensive tactic, did, did they burn out perhaps too early in the after the Argentina game? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, no, I think I think that teams now know that they were going to play that low block and to be able to be patient and not because because it's patience as well. You've got to be patient when you're playing against a low block and and to constantly switch play and and trying to drag them out and tease them out themselves, the opposition out when they're penned in is difficult to do. But the thing yeah. is, in tournament football, draw you know a tie doesn't count for much at one point if it can see you through. But you can't tie every game and expect to go through in the group stages. And and what you're going to do when it comes to the knockout? So it's totally different. I think league football. You can get away with that, but especially if you're going away from home. You're defending with a low block. You know, you get a point away from home, and then you're a bit more expansive at home. Mm. You can get away with that sort of tactic. I think in tournament football, there comes a point where teams are going to go, okay, they're going to have to come out at some point. And when they do come out, we're going to hit them with it. And, and you know, it's about being patient, dominating possession, which Croatia were excellent at again, uh, yeah. dominating the ball. But the second half was expansive. The best thing to happen was Croatia scoring a goal. Um, scoring a goal in the second half because it opened the game right up and it became a real entertaining game. Yeah, um, exactly. I'm just going to gonna share my screen. Sorry, John. I'm yeah, go ahead. Share my screen again because on the coach manual, as you know, we, we cover all sorts of tactical elements and we have got a session here on um, out of possession in the defensive third within a 4-4-2 shape. So tactical play, 4-4-2 out of possession in the defensive third. And it, it's, about, it's about keeping these four guys switched on, shifting, mm. sliding, Defending the defensive third. And, and again, unit shape is key. Defensive compactness is key. And if you're beaten, the opportunity to recover as well is also key. And we also expand that session and you get into, into a line of engagement as well. So a deeper offside line, lines of engagement and recognising who presses, 
who recovers, how do we keep it compact, and again, the key points are the same. So, so again, check out the coaching manual for any any tactical inputs on that. Yeah, we'll and put I'll, the link. Uh, we'll put the links yeah. in the description as well. That'd be great. But but overall, John, I mean, to summarise, I think Iceland are a credit to having the tournament. I like I like Iceland, and I think, like I said, they're everyone's second favourite team. The fans are fantastic. They're playing to their strengths. You know, they're not going to come out and try and dominate possession. Um, Sigurdsson's a, a great player, I rate him. Um, but it's 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 a team game, and they played to the strengths. Unfortunately, on this occasion, it didn't come off because teams in tournament football this time round were willing to be patient, willing to draw them out, willing to snatch it. Um, I think the Argentina game was a bit more predictable for them. That the fact that they're going to try and play through Messi, can we close those options down and just make sure runners off and in and, and behind him are getting trapped? So I think that's why it worked. And Nigeria were tactically smart by playing. I think Mikel will be deeper and, and getting him to play deeper passes over, through, around, switching. So that's how you beat beat a low block, block really. But um, fair, fair play to Iceland. You know, they're going home. But I think uh, I think everyone respects what they came and tried to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what advice could you give to coaches then? So if... if uh... Come up this season now. They they face a team that's playing with a low block. What could they do then to to get around that? First thing is be patient. Mm-hmm. Be patient on the ball. Um, look to keep moving the ball and shifting the ball. You need width. You need to get width because you need to try and stretch those units and those blocks out as much as possible. By stretching them, you've got an opportunity to play around if you're quick enough with the switches. Or as that block moves. At some point, they're going to leave gaps and spaces to play through them. Yeah. So it's moving the ball, switching the ball, being patient to play through. Another key point is make sure you've got a man who's ready for the counter attack. Who's their target man? Is it a man who's going to hold it up and play, or, or or a female should I say, a nine who's going to hold it into feet, who then lays it off for runners, eight and ten runners from deep, or is it a nine who wants to get in behind, or a seven and or eleven who wants to get in behind, who's really fast. You've got to work out what's their strategy to get out and hurt you. And you've got to be prepared for that. So you've got to leave players back behind the ball to support and counter for that. So it's not all about breaking the block down. Of course, we want to want to score goals, but it's also about not being broke by the block, not letting them come at you quickly. So those are the, the three things I'd be looking for. Be patient, use width, shift, 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 play through and just defend against the the counter attack as well and work out how they're going to play against you and how they're going to break out against you. And as the tournament progresses now when we go into the knockout stages, are you expecting to see low blocks then or do you think teams will be further pressing up the pitch? Uh, it depends on the state of the game. I really do think that people will manage games. Um, if a team gets a goal and thinks they can sit in and absorb, you might not see a low block from the outset, but you might see right, let's sit in and let's just absorb this because, again, if you've got that going the other way, it's tournament football. They have to come out. They have to now get a goal. And that's when you're at your most vulnerable. When you attack it, you come in the other way. It's like, right, let's absorb it for 10 minutes. Let's sit in and let's hit our man and let's get the second one and kill the game off. So I'd expect to see that sort of tactic. Um, I can't. I don't think there's a single team who are going to really just sit in to play on the counter. There's a lot of teams going through to the knockout stages who like possession of the ball and want to go forward. I think that's the best approach in in uh, in tournament football. I also think for for the fans and for the neutrals, it's it's also great to see. Whilst defending is an art form, I think these sort of occasions we want to see goals and we want to see teams going at each other and having a go really. It was the first nil nil today, wasn't it? In thirty-two matches, so uh, yeah. yeah, there's been a lot. Of, there's been a lot of goals scored. And it was nice to see, you know, my country, England, chip in with a few as well. Um, the next game for us will be interesting against Belgium and see where we're at. Um, there's there's still some big guns in there. You know, I'm not, I'm not getting carried away at all. There's still some big guns in there, and I, it could be someone who's not won it before. It could be someone who's not won it for a long time. Um, what I really like about this tournament and there's, there's a lot of different tactical principles on display and it really is between five or six teams who could win it in the past I don't think we've been able to say that there's normally one or two standouts so that's what makes it entertaining and that's why 
we can have these debates and I'm sure people will disagree with us both and people may agree with us, but we can have those debates because it's, it's so open and, it, and, and it's opinion as well. Yeah, thank you for joining me today, Paul. Um, so yeah, stay tuned and we'll be back with a new, another webinar and we'll announce that very soon. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, John.